What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, it's been about nine months since we checked in on Despot's game and this is one of my absolute favorites so it's always super fun to come back. If you've never seen this developer's body of work, it's sick. It's twisted, it's over the top, it's frequently kind of like R to X rated. Uh, their previous game, Despotism, I think 3000? Was that, was it 4000 or 3000? Well, regardless of the integer that ends the game, uh, Despotism whatever, their previous game, was absolute and complete debauchery packaged into basically what is a clicker game, seeing how long you can manage various resources without getting tired or your arm cramping up, and it was really, really entertaining, and I'm so glad that they decided to continue stuff inside the Despot Nebulous, because it really is a great game universe. Uh, Despot's game is an auto-battling roguelike RPG, where you take a team of naked humans, and you equip them with random weapons, and you battle endless hordes of monsters for the entertainment of a robot, like an AI, that has conquered humanity and basically now just uses us as his own personal TV show. And so anyways, this game is great, it's fantastic, I like every portion of it. Every time I play it, I'm so excited to play this game. There's a pretty good chance on the day this video goes live, we'll stream it. Because this game is an absolute screamer when it comes to like the sense of humor, and like the animation and the art style. Really, really great. If after watching this you wanted to get the early access for yourself, the game is down below in the description. Uh, since the last time we played the game, they've added a number of new gameplay modes. Uh, most intriguing to people that are into PvP, actually. Uh, a couple of the gameplay modes they added are actual PvP gameplay modes, where you square your team off against other players every three rounds, or just directly for a King of the Hill brawl, uh, to see who has the best team, basically, that cannot be knocked down. And so if you are into PvP combat, and you've always wondered you know all right if you wanted to play like something other than like what, what's the name of that riot one like league of legends and dota both have their own like auto battler i mean neither of them are as adorable or well animated as this game but anyways if you ever wanted to get like more of that like team fight tactics but in a game with fantastic pixel art made by a really cool indie developer this game now has pvp in it totally optional you don't have to do it, they didn't integrate it into the main game, but there is a version of the main game where every three rooms you open you have to fight another player, and then there's also basically like a seasonal tournament that they're doing now, and I think they're actually on like their 15th season uh, with this, still in early access, and so anyways, can't say enough good things about this game. Down below you'll also find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream where you can hang out live just in case you did want to see me stream this game. Let's go ahead and start a new one off. Oh yeah, did I mention there's cannibalism? There's cannibalism. We can make our little minions eat each other. So this is the beginning of the game. These are the little hatching tanks that we've escaped from and the despot doesn't know. And we're trying to like get out of here and he's like watching us and taunting us and all that kind of stuff. I actually don't know what all these buttons do over here. Oh, I guess they just changed the gameplay mode and they moved the monitors around, but I didn't even realize on this playthrough that you could click the monitors instead of using the actual little menus over here. That's cool. I like that. Oh, we're going to play on, more, on normal mode uh, because that's the mode that I think most people are going to start off in. Apparently, we have a 75% chance to loot back an item from a dead human, and then we've got to pick a theme for our starting team. So we've got medieval, which means that we have a wizard, we have a spearman, and we have a shield guy. We can go with cosplay, which means we get a plague doctor, and we get Excalibur, which is a tier 2 weapon. Uh, we can go with special magic, which gives us basically guys that are naked, and one dude that's got a tier 2 magic ring. Uh, we can do cooking show, which gives us a guy with a pretzel. Uh, we've got ultra violence, which is basically boxing gloves, guns, and claws. Uh, I'm, I'm probably just go with... You know, I kind of like uh, cannon fodder, but medieval's pretty good too. Let's start with medieval. I like medieval. And so off they go into the little squirty pipes. This is how the game functions. There are rooms. You open those rooms. Things happen inside those rooms. Frequently, it's robots or some kind of awful eldritch terror or undead lich monster that wants to eat your flesh. Occasionally, it's a cheeseburger. Sometimes it's a shop. You never quite know what you're going to get. Okay, that part's a lie. The last part was a bald-faced lie. You always know what you're going to get because the rooms are marked up here in the left-hand corner with the map. Uh, at the top of the screen, we've got our money. We've got how many humans we have. We have how much food we have left in our supply. We have our DNA. Uh, so you can spend money in this game on getting new units and new gear. Or you can spend it on leveling up your talent tree, which is only for this run. Once you die, all these go away. Uh, but anyways, these are very, very important. Don't forget about these. Uh, one of the biggest things I see with new players to this game 
is that they don't invest in their DNA mutations. And your DNA mutations can actually do a lot of heavy lifting when it comes to you progressing further on into the game. Uh, in fact, I think the game expects you to have several mutations by, like, certain floors. And if you don't, what you'll notice is that, like, you start collapsing very quickly in combat. Uh, so anyways, every time we swap a room, it costs us as much food as we have humans in our party. Our party can be rearranged. You can choose their order. You can choose where they stand. This entire grid can indeed be filled with humans, in case you were wondering. I think it's like a 7x7 seven seven box, so you can have almost 50 guys, I think, if you get like really far into the game. However, that's always the risk-reward element of the game, is that the more people you have, yes, the better in fights you are, but the more food you're eating. And there may not be enough food for you to keep going, and then you got to start cannibalizing your guys by clicking on them and putting them onto the cannibal spot. And everybody eats them. And so anyways, uh, we don't have any money right now, so I don't want to go to the food room. Let's go to the money room first and see if we can get our financial situation sorted out. Every single character is going to have their HP, their MP at the bottom, along with their stats, their abilities that they may or may not have. These little slots right here are new from the last time I played the game. These are basically god buttons. As you get into the game, you're occasionally going to loot what are effectively magic spells that allow you to manipulate combat itself. Or they allow you to do things before and after combat that you weren't able to do the last time that I played the game. To give you some examples, like one of the buttons might be for this battle, all of your guys attack 50% faster. Or it might be all enemies in the room die. Or it might be give yourself a couple free naked humans. Like, it just sort of depends. Let's fight our fight. Uh, it's one Dalek. Should be easy enough. We're going to want to pick up a healer pretty soon because our tank is going to take a lot of damage. Now, you may have noticed that down here, each one of these characters has a little tile that represents their job. Just like Team Fight Tactics or any of the other re re uh, roguelike auto battling games, for having certain stacks and combinations of classes in your party, you get bonuses. So if you have three tanks, all of your tanks will get the ability to taunt. Uh, if you have, I think, like three fighters in your party, they get like an attack speed aura or something like that. And so anyways, you can look at these right here and you can kind of plan out your party. We have 19 bucks. That's not very much, but we do have a backpack right here for a healer, a med kit. So I'm going to go ahead and make him on into a medic because medics are just invaluable in this game. You definitely want to have medics, trust me. Uh, we can re-roll this, we can upgrade it. I am going to upgrade it. Upgrading it gives you a higher chance to get higher tier items and then also more of them. So for example, this pitchfork right here is a tier 2 spear. And so anyways, like you, you want to spend your money. This game is very much all about kind of, I guess, resource management and knowing when to upgrade your shop, knowing when to upgrade your DNA like what like builds you need and what extra classes you're going to need when you start seeing weaknesses in your overall formation. And honestly, I think it does it better than the vast majority of other auto-battling games out there. Over the last year or so, since the developers sent over the first demo of the game, like I feel like the game has just gotten better and better and better, and it's got tighter and tighter, and it's gotten more balanced and more balanced. Like, it just, they keep making improvements, and it keeps working out. All right, so we got a, this right here is a free mutation. Right here on this side, you see all these slots? Uh, there are mutations you can buy, and there's mutations you can find. And so this is a mutation right here that means whenever one of our characters dies, uh, one of his allies will be infused with 100 health. And so we'll go ahead and take that real fast. Everyone now has that mutation. Now, I don't know if that's increasing their max HP, or if it's a heal that goes out when someone dies. I'm not sure on the specificity of that situation. But we'll keep an eye on it when it goes off. I can't recall from the last time I played the game. And unfortunately, my memory just keeps getting worse and worse and worse as the years go by, man. It is, it is utterly shocking how terrible my memory is now versus how my memory was when I was a bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, 25-year-old YouTuber. I'll tell you that. Uh, let's see here. We can get new stuff. I do like the Eldritch guys. Yeah, let's do a little Eldritch build right here. There we go. We'll get like a wizard back here. We'll kind of develop out our ranged guys. We could afford to get two more guys, but I kind of want to buy food. I like to develop a big stockpile of food early, and so I tend to run my parties very lean. I don't tend to have, like, really large numbers of guys. I tend to have small numbers of very well-equipped guys with lots of mutations and stuff. Unfortunately, we didn't get great food over here. We just got french fries and two burgers. Three burgers, actually. Okay. Uh, when you're going back into rooms that you've already traversed, it still charges you food. So when you're picking your path and where you want to go inside the dungeon, try to serpentine would be my advice to save on food. 
like serpentine around the dungeon whenever you can so that you're hitting every single room kind of in sweeps without getting stuck one way or getting stuck another way. Uh, first boss, let's go. It's a big old claw guy. He's not going to beat us. This boss is actually really, really generous and easy to take out. He almost got our tank, though. That's a little bit upsetting. So when we beat a boss, these are the abilities that I was talking to you about. These are buttons. Uh, in fact, the despot talks about the fact that he felt like his game didn't have enough buttons. Therefore, he added buttons to it so that people would stop complaining about the amount of buttons. And if you take a look at this, it's actually like a wired button that's been pulled out of a console and it slots into here, which is kind of cool design for the UI. We've got Deja Vu. It will take you to the start of the level. Triggers automatically when you lose. Will not work on the floor where it was obtained. Or we can get Archived Newbies, which allows us to get three free naked guys. Twice. It, there you go. So that's six free guys right there that we don't have to spend money on. And we can get them precisely when we want to get them. We've got another shop, but after every single floor, you've got to deal with an event. A smiling, holographic, pixelated face appears in front of the humans. I have a deal for you. I'll steal some of your zest for life, and in return, I'll give you 30 tokens. Deal? I'm gonna go ahead and say no deal on this one. I'm feeling plenty zesty already. I sympathize. Here, have five pity tokens and get out. All right, uh, the text right there is humorous, by the way, if you read through it. I actually very much agree with the developer's sense of humor. Uh, I get the feeling we would probably get along from a lot of the dialogue. Their humor seems to be kind of like dark, but also juvenile in the same way that mine is. Uh, we've got 33 bucks right now. I'm going to reroll once. See what I see. I take a pitchfork guy. Yeah, let me get my free Humies in here. We'll go ahead and line them up on the sides. I'll take a Spearman. That sounds good. So there we go. We now have a Trident. I never understood why they call it a Trident. Like, that makes it sound like it's got like three maces on the end. It should be called like a Tri-Poke or like a Tri-Stab. I don't know. Uh, let's go ahead and actually, I'm just going to leave these guys naked back here and hide them behind the wizards. And then we will get them some gear later. Oh, dude, I just thought of why it's named that. Dent, it means tooth in old Latin. I had to think about it for a second. So they're saying like three tooth. Gotcha. Uh, we lost our shield, but that's not that big of a deal because he dropped his shield. So I can just give it to one of the newbies. This is a tier one shield. It's not a very good shield. Uh, we need to find something better for our newbies. Otherwise, they are not going to be long for this world. Let's go ahead and we will try to face roll our way through this fight. Hopefully it works out. Uh, but we are getting chunked pretty good by some of these enemies. There's another shield right there, but it's like another crappy one. I don't know if I want it. Let's re-roll it real quick. Man, they ain't giving me nothing right now. They're bleeding me dry. Okay, fine. I'm going to take a chainsaw and I'm going to give it to this guy because it turns him into Jason, and that's awesome. And so anyways, although I guess it'd be more like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but he's got a ski mask on. Either way, chainsaws are awesome, and I have known that chainsaws are awesome since I played Doom for the first time. That was when I had my great realization that chainsaws are the most rad thing on Earth. So let's go ahead and go back this. Like, you ever chop down, like, a tree with a chainsaw, dude? It's pretty empowering. It's like, the chainsaw, I think, is a tier 3 sword. So he should hit pretty hard, and he should have a lot of HP by comparison to a lot of the enemies we have around. We did get a free mutation. Our throwers, slow and attacking enemies, attack speed by 30%. Uh, thorn armor, your mages return damage back to the enemy. Or we can get last chance when below 30% health, your shooters have a chance to dodge attacks. I'm going to re-roll. We don't really have any of that stuff. All abilities get triggered more frequently. Fighters damage is increased by 15 with every attack. And then we have throwers have a chance to evade. Man, we're not having great luck right now. Each time a human's active ability is used, a random enemy takes 50 magic damage. That's pretty good. Splash. The tank's attacks deal 20% splash damage. I want that one right there. Yeah, give me, give me, give me that one. That one seems like we use a lot of active abilities. And so I sort of feel like, I feel like there's a pretty good chance we're going to get some actual mileage out of that. I need to focus on getting a build going though too. I need to pick up a third spear. Now there is a caveat to your builds. Uh, weapons don't stack. 
So if I have three tier one spears in this formation, we won't get credit for it on the overall build. You would have to have a tier one, a tier two, and a tier three, basically, in order to get that bonus. I do want food because we're almost out of it. And so I'm going to spend pretty aggressively right here on food just to keep us stacked up for a little while, especially since, unfortunately, we've caught ourselves up in a situation where we've got to backtrack. And so let's cut off to the left over here. And it looks like we have an event room that we've got to deal with. There's an event room to the left. There's a food room above us. Let's go ahead and check out the event real quick and kind of see how that ends for us. Uh, random letters. Excuse me, what? Bring me five pink, soft, gentle, defenseless. Looks like it wants us to sacrifice five newbies. Uh... Yeah, let's go looking for five newbies and we'll sacrifice them in there. We got two shops right next to us anyways, and I got a newbie summon. So we will bring you your soft, supple newbies. Even if it costs us resources. Oh, our tank got buried, dude. That sucks. Now I'm tankless. And we didn't get our shield back. Ain't that something. Uh, we need more healers. That's what we really need. So I'm going to go ahead and get a witch doctor right here. I'm sorry, a plague doctor. And then I have to save a little bit of money. I don't have a choice. So that gives me eight. So we should still be all right. Let me get the three that I need. And then we'll take another med kit because I need more healers. And we'll put them up over here. And then we will spawn more newbies. And I like the idea of another sword. But I need one more newbie for that. All right, there we go. Put him up front. That got us up to level two swords. At level three, we get critical hit, which is basically like this game's version of Braver. It just makes you hit really, really hard one time. Come to me. Jump into the pit. Seems like this thing has enthralled the newbies. Curious. Let us not interfere. Good. I will impart my wisdom on you. Hell yeah. Feeling a surge of wisdom from a giant floor hole. What kind of wisdom did we get? Oh, we got a mutation. What does it do? One for all. Newbies assemble into a giant mega newbie. Its power will depend on the amount of newbies. Okay, so like we can buy newbies, and then if they don't have any equipment, they will turn into a mecha newbie to defend themselves instead of just running around all naked hanging brain. All right. I accept it. I think that sounds like a really great thing to have. Uh, we have the opportunity to get another tank in here, and I'm not going to turn up my nose at it because we really need a tank, and that's a tier two tanking item too, so that'll help out. It'll be it'll be helpful. We do still need to round out like our core, like this this run. I haven't gotten the things that I want. Okay, I just I haven't gotten the stuff that I want yet. Normally, I like to pick up like a couple of tanks in the first floor, and then by the second floor, I'm fleshing out the DPS. You almost died. You almost died on me, Bruda. All right, we got a little bit of food for the road, but not much. Cut off to the left. Honestly, I think we came out worse for it. At best, I think that food terminal just let us turn around without taking too much food damage. All right. Well, there goes my sortie mans. And now the boss is clubbing the ever-loving hell out of my wizard. Yeah, just heal through it. Heal through it. Love all the death animations. The pixel art in this game just has such fantastic fidelity. Uh, deja vu, or we can get teleport to a random room. I'm going to take deja vu, I guess, and then I think we're out of here. We don't have much money. Did you know that if you mix up all the letters in every word except for the first and the last one, the text would still be very readable? But if you... Mix all the letters you can read. <laughs> I think this one gives us tokens, maybe? It's got Ocknets at the end, which I know from previous experience. Don't ask me how I know. Listen, I used to have a hard time at Chuck E. Cheese, okay? Uh, there we go. You made the right choice, and you get 10 tokens. All right. I like how with the next button right there, all the words were mixed up. That's like, that's the hallmark of this game, is that they have so many running jokes. And like, even the UI gets incorporated into some of the jokes. Uh, we need to pick up a few more people. Who I want to pick up, I don't know. 
We also need to upgrade our shop. We've got another tank over here, and I think that's just an abundantly good idea. So we'll go ahead and throw a tank in, just to soak a little bit more damage. I'm going to throw some money at upgrading the shop to the next level so that maybe we can pull out something a little bit more effective, but we're basically out of money for right now. So I'm going to get a couple of my units back. There we go. Oh, nope, I don't want you over there. I want you, like, over here. Yeah, basically, just get somebody in behind each of these tanks. There we go. All right, next room. Big fight. Yeah, we got ourselves like a mega brawl, like an action mega brawl over here. Luckily, their DPS was nothing to be too scared about, so we seem to be recovering okay. Uh, the medics are trying to heal up the wizard, but couldn't get there in time. What is that? A plasma gun? Like the one from Doom? I mean, I can get taunt on my tanks right now, though. And, like, that's going to limit a lot of the scattered DPS that's flying around. There we go. Now we're looking a little bit better. Actually, put the Tier 2 Spear in the front. There we go. Perfect. Uh, they now have the ability to taunt, which is great. In addition, if I can get 10 tokens together, we can boost everybody's HP by 50%, uh, which is a good idea, I think, by the next floor, just to make sure that we actually have the chin on us to take some of the hits we're going to start taking. There we go. My tanks are now taunting. We should see a lot less scattered damage flying all over the place now. Uh, we've got another mutation. We can use our abilities more. We've got Sword Dance, uh, which makes our swordsmen spin every 14 seconds, dealing base attack as magic damage over 7 seconds uh, for 30 mana. We also have Multicast. All units have a 15% chance to use a active ability, ignoring the cooldown and mana cost. Yeah, that seems okay. I'll take that. And then right here, we'll upgrade that HP. So there it is. Now all of our guys should have 50% more HP, which doesn't sound like it's going to help, but it actually is going to help. Like, it's going to definitely mean that we can tank a little bit better. All right, boys. Give them hell. From here on out, we're probably not going to want to pick up more guys unless it's just like tier upgrades. In addition, all of these guys have their own internal level. That's why I kind of described it as an RPG is that not only do each of these guys have a tiered weapon class, they also have their own level as designated by this little yellow bar down here. And the game says, quote, they get more awesome when they level up. So there you go. Uh, we still haven't made a mecha newbie either. Like, I've got to make a mecha newbie by the end of the episode. You guys are going to be upset at me if I don't assemble a naked mecha newbie. I mean, it just seems like one of those things that's like easy free content, you know? Easy peasy lemon squeezy fight. Down goes the enemy. Now that everybody's able to tank, it's giving our healers a huge break because they're not having to run around all over the place to heal people. There is a mutation you can get that gives all of your healers a ranged heal, which is like, in my opinion, one of the must-take abilities because then they stay way in the rear with all the casters and everything and they can heal anybody on the battlefield from anywhere, which is really, really good. Ooh, the 2-2. Tutu. The 2-2 tutu is pretty solid. If I remember correctly, the 2-2 gives everybody like a fat attack power, or it's got it gives them a fat attack speed boost. Um, can't really afford anything. We'll make Mecha Newbie later once the episode's coming to an end. You guys still got like another 5-10 minutes to go on this one. And so like there, there's plenty of time to assemble the Mecha Newbie. You know, right now, listen, if I assemble the Mecha Newbie now, you're all going to leave me and then I'm going to be depressed, all right? Because you will have got what you came for, which is a bunch of naked guys turned into a giant Gund like Gundam-style Megazord Mecha, and then you're going to leave. That's why when Real Big Fish plays a show, they never play Sellout to the last song. All right, let's go over here. Finish this room off. This fight should be no problem. It should be nice and solid for the batting cleanup here. Yeah, no problem. Well, I mean, he ran over the other side, which is moderately annoying, but, you know, it's fine. I still don't really have enough money for really anything, to be honest. I could add another guy, but we're already having food problems. So unless there's, like, a direct upgrade here, like I can take somebody from... Wait, is the shield tier 2 or is the shield tier 1? 15 to 20... 
Yeah, I was going to say, the periodic table is tier 2. Uh, we can roll for upgrades and kind of see what we've got around. Uh, I'm just going to throw my tokens into upgrading. We'll take it up to a level 4 shop. Oh, of course the defibrillator drops, dude. The defibrillator is so good for healing. It's amazing. All right. Well, I'll try to pick up a defibr. I'll try to pick up a defibrinator later. But for now, I am depressed. For I am undefibrinatored. I've always wanted to do that, by the way. Like when you're watching like a medical TV show, and they're like rubbing them together, and they're like, "He's going code, clear." Like I don't know, dude. Like, I don't want somebody to be sick or wounded, but I do want the satisfaction of taking Thunder God paddles and going ka -chunk. Like, I, I wish there was a way to get the latter without the former. Uh, we can do a mass heal mid-combat, or we can get more free newbies. I'll take the mass heal. Why not? Mass heal seems like it may be something like a nice little card to keep in your back pocket just in case. The humans come across a holographic smiling skeleton with most of its neon skin peeling off. It stands next to a wheel that looks like a giant dartboard. Spin the wheel! Spin the wheel! Spin the wheel! The hologram is kind of glitchy. Spin the wheel! And you hit a prize wedge! You've won a mutation, a useful explosive mutation. From now on, your humans blow up when they die. Okay, yeah, I'll take that. Uh, there are way more mutations in the game right now than there was the last time I played the game. I have been constantly seeing new ones come up, so I'm guessing they've had content patches since the last video I did on this where they've added more mutations. Uh, there is a cursed contract over here. Yeah, we'll take that. Oh, it turned him into like a, a squidman. If we get one more, they get the Call of Cthulhu ability, which I think makes tentacles pop up all over the map and do AoE damage to everything around them. We're not quite there yet, though. To the next shop room to get funds. All right. Off to war we go. I should probably upgrade their HP again, too. It's kind of what I'm leaning towards. Oh, there's a... There's a Randy Rhodes Flying V guitar, dude. I mean, it's called the RR. It's got to be Randy Rhodes. Like, there's not a whole lot of guitarists out there that have, like, a Flying V whose initials are RR. And it's pretty much, like, who it's got to be. Uh, we don't really have any money, though, which is kind of depressing. There's a dry hander up here, though, uh, which is a three-hander. You got to, you know, you put both hands on it, and then a friend helps out. It's what friends do. They help each other lift heavy swords. Unfortunately, we're broken. We have no Mun Muns. So we will continue to attempt to stack ducats out here. Uh, he's beating up on my wizard again. Can you can you make him stop beating up my wizard with his Wakazashi, please? Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, we got a little bit of money right there, and I will spend it all on foodles. Oodles of foodles, my doodles. All right, let's cut off to the left and get another mutation. There's another shop room right up there. Ooh, this is a big fight. This is a fight with a lot of moving parts. Oh, we can't use the healing combat. We gotta use it after, gotcha. I had a button one time that was really good. It allowed you to res your entire party after the fight, so no matter who died, you got them back. It was great. Uh, we don't have any of the classes that are on here. We do have swordsmen. Fencers get 100% more XP. I only have like, well, I have two fencers. Give me another one. Uh, we've got Eldritch guy, or mag mages have a chance to rise from the dead with 25% health after they die. Your healers have a chance to rise from the dead after, okay. And then we have Hungering Fury. When starving and hungry, your units get more attack speed. Oh, yeah. When your units are hungry, you get like six rooms of leeway, and this little meter goes down. And if it goes down too far, they get hungrier. But there are some mutations that benefit from hunger. I'm going to go ahead and make it so that maybe my, my medics res. Losing a medic can be kind of bad in this game if you can't replace him. Easy peasy fight. Shouldn't be a problem. This is just mop up. Good, good. Down goes the enemy. And what do we have here? Oh, we got the Dr. Octopus Claws, man. That's one of my favorite items. Uh, what does a level 3 healer do? So they receive a level 3 heal ability. Oh, nice. Okay. That'll be helpful. And I do have a new healing thing over here. I mean, it's doable. But, like, are we really struggling with our healing right now? 
I guess I could take this dude and cannibalize him. Grab that and then buy another human and put that on him. So now he's got the crash cot. And now we're getting access to a level three heal, which is even better. And then what else do I have around here? If I could get another Eldritch item, I think we'd be in good shape. Stilts. Okay, I didn't really think of stilts as like a thing that I wanted, but yeah, sure. I... Well, I don't want to spend any more money. We're not really getting anything that's coming up, but I want to pick up one more cultist. If I can get another cultist, I think that would be helpful. Save the mage! Save him! He's being cloven. All right, a little bit more food, and I think we should be able to ignore food nodes from here on out, at least for a little while while we build up a tiny bit. I do want to build the mecha newbie, so I'll probably... We're getting towards the end of the video. My thoughts on this game are that it's utterly fantastic. Everything from the soundtrack to the pixel art to the mechanics themselves are done exceedingly well. This is an auto-battling game that is created to the highest standard. It's humorous. It's light, and yet at the same time, it's dark and bloody and requires some thought. Otherwise, you get dumpstered. Uh, it's a great game. And honestly, this game makes me... i It makes me like their first game was good. This game is great. And that makes me really look forward to whatever they're going to be doing next. But I'm not going to I'm not gonna push that point too much because, like, they're, they're still working on this game. Let's make a super mecha newbie. There we go. All right, we have many newbies. Let's see what this mecha newbie looks like. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were playing Despot's game. Tomorrow we will be playing something else. I appreciate you all cruising through, and thank you for the luxury of your time. Hopefully you found the video to be entertaining. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody.